Compulsion Games just wants to make great video games. It's baked into their name. But the industry is filled with challenges, especially if you're a tiny indie studio, which is how Compulsion started. They struggled for years on thin budgets to turn their dreams into reality, only to find that being discovered knocked them out of the frying pan and into the fire. Growth means growing pains, and Compulsion's journey so far is filled with both. This is how it went down. Guillaume Provost was an executive producer at Arcane Studios when he decided to go his own way. Got approached by this Taiwanese conglomerate in Taipei who wanted to start a studio in Montreal. Everything looked like it was a really good deal, it was a really good salary, it was a really good concept. I got to start my own team, have tons of money. So I signed the contract, told everybody we were leaving, we quit our, we quit our jobs. Uh, and then uh, financial crisis happened. Where, but now it's official, we are in a recession. The research- and the money evaporated uh, just a few weeks before uh, moving. We'd set the ship to sail already to move to Montreal and start a studio, so we just moved to Montreal and started a studio just with no money. <laughs> with no publisher support, Compulsion had to raise money for its first games by contributing to other projects like Darksiders and Dungeons and Dragons Daggerdale. Over the next few years, Compulsion peaked at eight people and moved from a private home into a leaky, unheated Montreal office. Compulsion was really a, uh, uh, a name that we picked as a desire for us to make games and something that we thought was, was a value that we wanted to explore uh, as the a compulsion of players to play the games that we make. But Provost knew that, quote, starting an innovative game and bringing it to fruition requires a lot of patience and sacrifice. That game was Contrast, a puzzle platformer that blends 2D and 3D mechanics. Contrast tells the story of Dee Dee, a little girl with an imaginary friend who can shift between the real world and the shadows on the wall. Compulsion found a small publisher and their Labor of Love released in 2013, only to be met with mixed reviews. Gamers on Steam loved it, but critics felt that the game's virtues were sabotaged by bugs and conventional box-on-button puzzling. Small as it was, Contrast pushed Compulsion's tiny team to its limits. Provost favored survival horror for their next game, We Happy Few. We wanted something that was replayable, we wanted something that was roguelike, we wanted something that was easier for a small team to uh, create something memorable that would have value for players. Creatively, Compulsion wanted to keep grappling with mature themes. Provost's father had passed away three weeks before Contrast launched, and the team was receptive to exploring darker territory. Quote, people put up their nice happy moments, but you don't see the real unhappiness that's below. Chief Creative Officer Sam Abbott on the origins of We Happy Few. But the survival genre was crowded and competitive, so Compulsion played up their dystopian world and eccentric characters. The plan snowballed when Compulsion first showed their prototype at PAX East in 2015. We Happy Few had great word of mouth, but Provost recalls that it focused on elements that weren't fully developed. Everyone was like, oh, Bioshock, we want to know the world, what's the story, this is amazing. Compulsion wanted to ensure that the final game matched fans' expectations, so they used a crowdfunding campaign to begin a process Sam Abbott called, quote, open development, as design changed from survival horror to story-driven adventure. From Kickstarter, uh, we engaged that, that community for a while, and that gave us like, an opportunity to really actually work with the community. We started doing community updates every week. Uh, uh, the team actually made over, I think, over 160 updates uh, to the community over the course of the lifetime of the, the project to keep people involved and also to get feedback from them over the course of the development cycle. Um, but we actually helped gather more momentum to actually get the attention of uh, a, a big player in the industry, which was Microsoft. In 2016, Xbox was increasing its efforts to support indie games through its ID at Xbox program, and We Happy Few was a great match. Compulsion signed on, earning a spot on stage at the Xbox E3 briefing that summer. The exposure was phenomenal. That actually launched our early access campaign, uh, which then you know, funneled more money for us to actually grow the team and actually realized the vision that we had for the, the team after having it shown to the public for the first time. And after two years of like telling people this is the thing that we want to build, we finally had the team and the money to actually go and build it. Oh. 
Compulsion was growing, but expectations seemed to grow even faster. Provost was mindful, quote, generating too much buzz for what we could actually deliver. That's when Gearbox Publishing stepped in, excited by Compulsion's E3 sizzle reel to help. Compulsion signed a publishing deal with Gearbox in 2017. What Gearbox provided us was a perspective and um, education and knowledge that we just simply didn't have inside the studio. Meanwhile, Microsoft was looking for developers to join Xbox Game Studios. Speaking to Polygon, head of Xbox Phil Spencer summarized key qualities of Xbox Game Studios' wants in potential partners. Quote, people. People that we knew and we've worked with before. Teams. Teams that have stuck together through some good times and some adverse times. And then ideas, in terms of steady flow of new things that we could bring to our players. Compulsion ticked all the boxes, and in June 2018, just two months before launch, they joined the Xbox family. We embarked on a quest, a quest to find creative teams that have the mastery of our art form. And we found innovative game designers, master storytellers, exceptional world builders. And now, I'm excited to welcome Compulsion Games to Microsoft Studios. In August 2018, after more than four years of hard work and hype, We Happy Few released to mixed reviews. Technical issues dampen scores, and Provost says that Compulsion's rapid rise was a double-edged sword. Wanting on the one side to be faithful to what we've promised the community we would build, but also seeing what would be the right direction for the team is one of the things that was super difficult for us to deal with in a kind of an early access, community-driven game development where we had made Kickstarter promises at the beginning. That tension was impossible to reconcile. But across the reviews, warm and cold, a trend emerged. Key elements and big ideas were frequently praised as, quote, genuinely wonderful and, quote, overflowing with potential. In a 2020 interview with Game Reactor, Phil Spencer shared his excitement for Compulsion's future. Quote, teams that can build new franchises, tell new stories, those are always sought after. That's why I'm excited about projects like the next Compulsion game. Quote, it's a young studio and they're still growing and learning the craft of what they are as a team. But looking at what they're going to do next, I love their ability to create new worlds and unique settings. Phil Spencer on Compulsion Games. Talking to Game Industry Biz, head of Xbox Game Studios, Matt Booty couldn't share details about Compulsion's next game, but he did reaffirm Xbox Game Studios' hands-off ethos. Quote, they're working on their next game and have spent the last year on early ideation. And then, as it starts to get exposure, feedback will come in and things will start to steer. But it's important to leave them alone for as long as possible, until they've got something that walks on its own. Trying to maintain creativity inside an organization like Microsoft is not as hard as people think it is. Uh, It's really just about having a leadership group inside Microsoft that understands the value of creativity and creative games. Compulsion, now a team of 40 and growing, is currently dreaming up their next game, a game that has the full support of Xbox Game Studios. Build the team not just for the next game, but for the next series of games. It's been a wild ride for Compulsion over the last 10 years, but the most interesting thing about their story is that it's only just begun. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we got more videos coming out each week here on Expert Zone.